Hi everyone. I just finished a four day fast and I was going to talk about that, but I'm seeing a ton of questions about weight loss numbers. So I'm, I'm going to address that instead. Specifically, the question is, when you fast, how much of the weight loss is permanent fat loss versus, you know, how much is, how much is just going to come back? You're losing weight, but how much is really lost and how much is going to come back? Well, the, the goal is fat loss rather than, than weight loss. And that's an important distinction. To lose a pound of fat, you need to burn 3,500 calories, roughly more than you consume. And uh, just to put that in perspective, you burn about 100 calories per mile. So to burn a pound of fat, you just need to run 35 miles. That's with, without increasing your food intake. That's important as well. It's got to be a net increase of 3,500 calories burnt. Or you could eat 3,500 calories less. And um, th I mean, honestly, that is, that's one of the reasons that exercising to lose weight is, is really not a very good idea. And working out is important though, and I'll talk about that toward the, toward the end of the video. Just so working the math through, if let's assume you burn around 2,000 calories a day, that's about what most people burn. If you fast for a week, you know, seven times 2,000, you're going to burn 14,000 calories while consuming zero. So you're going to have a caloric deficit of 14,000 calories. 14,000 calories divided by 3,500, you know, calories per pound, that's four pounds. So you can expect to lose uh, four pounds of, of fat from week-long fast. And that, I mean, four pounds doesn't sound like much, but... Uh, Two pounds is a quart of fat, roughly. And uh, so if you can find a way to consistently lose uh, two pounds a week, that's a caloric deficit of about a thousand calories a day. If you can do that, you can lose a quart of fat a week. And uh, so over the course over the course of a year, that's that's a hundred pounds or, Oh, what a visual! Fifty quart bottle, <laughs> fifty quart bottles of fat. It's kind of a, a gross way of looking at it, but okay. But going back to it, um, in a week you can a week of fast, and you can expect to lose four pounds of fat. So, why is the scale showing thirteen or fifteen pounds lower? So the the short answer is your your body is carrying less uh, food and water. You know, I'm gonna switch over here for a minute. Um, yeah, so it's usually the result of food or or water intake, sodium and carbs cause water retention. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, all food and drinks have some weight. The resulting urine and stool also have weight. So um, we 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 kind of we tend to forget that the food and water that we're consuming by themselves have weight. So to illustrate, let's pull up how much weight does Joey Chestnut gain during the Nathan's hot dog eating contest? All right, last year, Chestnut revealed he gained about 24 pounds during the 10-minute contest. 24 pounds, okay? That's not nothing. Um, I, I don't want to think about how that, 20, how that 24 pounds exited either. <laughs> There's not a good answer to that question. But 24 pounds of, of food and water that he consumed. Now, that's not all going to become fat. I think he's going to get rid of it. But the point is, um, you're carrying... Just from eating regular, you know, uh, a, a regular diet, there's a certain uh, mass of food and water that is traveling through your system at any given point. If you stop eating as much, if you normally have, call it, you know, 10 or 15 pounds of, of food traveling through you, and you cut your intake in half, instead of 10 or 15 pounds going through you, you're only going to have you know, five or seven pounds. You're going to lose five or seven pounds immediately but that's that's not a change to your body composition you still have the same amount of fat and muscle and everything else that you did before all it's changed is you're carrying less food in your gut so most of the time that you see big uh, reductions on the scales that's that's where they're coming from is you're just carrying less food in your gut you stop eating on Monday you still use the restroom a couple of times on Tuesday and Wednesday and then after that it stops but um, the fact that you're no longer carrying as much 
food in transit is going to translate into in, into numbers on the scale. People think about water weight. They don't tend to think about food weight. Let's move over to water weight for a minute, though. So a, a quart of water, uh, it's about the same as fat. It weighs about it weighs about two pounds, or a, qu a quart of water does weigh two two pounds. Um, if I drink a quart of water, I will weigh two pounds more. Period. If I pee a quart, I'm going to weigh two pounds less. Period. Um, you can, I mean, wrestlers know this. You can manipulate your weight very easily by manipulate manipulating how much water is in you. Relating that to a diet, so. Your body tries to keep pretty consistent blood sodium levels, you know, between apparently between 135 and 145 milli equivalents per liter, whatever that means. But the point is that's a pretty tight range that you're trying to keep it in. So if you if you bring in less sodium, you're going to continue to sweat and pee, you know. But if you're not uh, bringing in sodium, the sodium content of your blood is going to go down, and as a result, your body will. Um, will lose water uh, in, in order to try to keep the concentration the same. You've got an article saying that you can uh, increase your body weight by about two to three pounds within a day or two of consumption if you eat a bunch of salt. If you deplete yourself of, uh, yourself of sodium, you're going to lose a couple of pounds of water. But if you're, if you're maintaining sodium levels, if you're, if you're doing a good job of regulating sodium, are you are you going to lose water weight? Well, yeah, that you, the answer is still yes, and that leads us to to glycogen. So, glycogen is your body's uh, first energy reserve. Think of it as this is literally what it is: it's sugar that is stored in your liver and in your muscle cells. Um, and the reason you store sugar, glycose, glycogen in the form you know in, in the form of glycogen in your muscle cells is so that if you're walking through the jungle and a tiger jumps out and chases you and you need energy right now, it's already there at the muscle. You don't have to wait for your body to you know, digest more food. It's ready. You've got sugar there. And if you're eating a typical Western diet, you probably are, uh, you're probably burning glycogen or glucose sugar most of the time. So hitting the wall is when you run out of glycogen. You only have about 16 miles of glycogen in you, and so it's it's fairly common for marathon runners to hit the wall. So in, in endurance sports, it says, such as running and cycling, hitting the wall or bonk is a condition of sudden fatigue and loss of energy caused by the depletion of glycogen stores in the muscles and liver. Um, that's why these guys are, you know, drinking power drinks and other stuff, because you've only got about 16 miles worth of glycogen in you. Um, now, you can you can get around that if you're fat adapted, you know, if, if you train your body to burn fat as its primary fuel source instead of sugar, you can avoid the bonk. That's a story for a different day, though. Um, okay, so how much how much glycogen? So an average, what it tells us is an average individual's body can only store about 400 grams of glycogen. Each gram of glycogen is stored with at least three grams of water. So however much you're storing in terms of sugar, you're going to have about... Um, three times that weight in water. Three grams of water per gram of glycogen, you have about 400 grams of glycogen, which means you have about 1,200 grams of water. So 1,600 total grams or 1.6 kilograms or three and a half pounds. So if you deplete your glycogen and your body will want to de deplete the glycogen first, you'll lose about three and a half pounds of water weight from glycogen. As soon as you start eating again, especially carbs, um, you'll store the you'll store the glycogen again. Your body wants to have that reserve, and you're going to store um, three and a half pounds of water along with it. So, so going back to where we started, if you're fasting, you can expect to lose about four pounds of fat per week. The rest of it is just going to come back. With if if a fad diet claims that you're going to lose ten or fifteen pounds a week. They're they're talking water weight, whether and and less food in your system. You know, like if you, not to be gross, but if you took diuretics, had an enema, et cetera, and just cleaned out your digestive tract, you'd drop ten pounds. You wouldn't lose any fat. All all that you're doing is emptying out all the inventory that you're of food that you're carrying. Um, now I promised to talk about exercise, and this is really important. Um, 
So when you're fasting, your body tends to shift into, into starvation mode. Um, you know, we can see here, recent clinical evidence bears out the fact that repeated fasting does not cause muscle loss. Um, and then there's several articles on that. I just did muscle loss from fasting, and most of the articles are explaining that, no, you don't, you know, once you shift into legit starvation mode, your body will protect the muscle. And, uh, but what if you're just on a, a long-term term diet? Well, your body would much rather get rid of muscle than it would get rid of fat because a pound of bus muscle burns seven or eight calories more than fat does. It's a, it's a more expensive resource. So if your body is in, in uh, survival mode, it will very happily get rid of muscle before it gets rid of fat. Now, the, the, the problem is, whereas a pound, burning a pound of fat provides 3,500 calories, a pound of muscle only provides about 700 calories. So if your body decides to make up its caloric deficit by burning muscle instead of fat, 700 instead of 3,500, you're going to lose weight, you're going to lose body mass five times as quickly. So if, uh, if you're losing weight fast, long term, I mean, long term, if you're losing a bunch of weight, there's a pretty good chance that you're losing muscle mass instead of, instead of body fat. If the numbers don't pencil out, if you're penciling out that you're running a caloric deficit of about a thousand calories a day, and you're losing more than two pounds a week, you're probably losing muscle. That's all you get to is all you're going to lose a week in, in, in fat. Now, how do you avoid that? Well, your body won't get rid of muscle that you're using. And so when you're, when you're exercising, the point of exercise is not to burn those extra calories. The point of exercising is to signal to your body not to get rid of that, of that muscle. Now, aerobics are also a, not a good idea for that reason because you have different types of muscle fibers. You've got the endurance fibers, and those tend to be more lean, and then you've got uh, high-intensity, fast-twitch muscle fibers that uh, do heavy work. And if you're doing aerobics and you're not doing the heavy work, you're going to get rid of your <laughs> high-strength muscle fibers, and you'll lose you'll lose muscle mass. I, I spent a, a summer j uh, jogging a few years back and lost pretty much all the muscle mass in my upper body and lower body too. I didn't lose any fat. It was really pretty depressing that way. Um, so you want to, you want to, you want to exercise to signal to your body that you want to hang on to the, onto, onto your muscle tissue. Okay. So to wrap it up in summary, pound of fat is 3,500 calories. So a week-long fast is 14,000 calories. It's four pounds of fat, assuming just a, a regular normal activity level. Um, if you're losing more than that, it's probably water weight. Hopefully it's water weight. Hopefully you're not burning muscle. Now, um, and so if you lose 15 pounds from a week-long fast, expect to gain 11 of it back. Now that, I know that sounds I know that sounds depressing because it's I mean it's a good feeling to watch the scale drop by that amount, but it sure hurts to come, to see it come back. So, a good idea if you're trying to lose weight, you know how, however you do it, you need to run a caloric deficit of about a thousand calories a day, which adds up to a you know about seven thousand calories a week, which is about two pounds of fat a week. That's sustainable. That's a, you're losing a quart. I mean, seriously, a quart jug of fat every single week. And as long as the math works out, you don't even have to look at the scale. Let the scale do what it does. Let it float up, let it drop, you know, let your water do what it wants to do. But if you're if you're maintaining a caloric deficit of about a thousand calories a day, you will lose eight to ten pounds a month. And um, and again, one more time, exercising is not to burn the extra calories. Exercising is to not lose muscle mass because you don't want to lose muscle mass because then you're losing you're lowering your metabolism um thanks for sticking with me this long and uh that's all i have have a good one